it's finally happened. Now, I don't know how aware you guys outside of Britain are of Ian Watkins. You're about to find out a little bit about him. Unfortunately, I'm the bearer of that bad news, of course. This channel is known uh, for its cults and defectors and all sorts of uh, stories. And that leads us to discuss survivors uh, and also the real criminals and really horrible people who are out there. I believe it's around one or two percent of the world who are psychopaths and one or two percent of the world who have that inclination towards. I have to be very careful what I say on YouTube, of course, but younger people and Ian Watkins appears to have been or appears to be he is still clinging on to life at least for now uh one of those well i think he's in both categories to be honest and i my attention was first drawn to ian watkins uh before what came out in 2012 um i was quite young at the time i guess what would i have been 23 or something like that we're talking about 10 11 years ago um, and a friend of mine is a, a singer in a very popular band. And I don't know if he'd want me to mention him in, in relation to this. So maybe I won't. But he's uh, just just by coincidence, he was someone I grew up with and he was a band. And he was on tour with uh, Ian Watkins's band, The Lost Prophets. The Lost Prophets is all Lost Prophets is one word. I imagine it's some sort of pun on prophets as well as prophets, if you get my drift. Um, pretty average band, some rock songs and things like that. And my friend had told me that he'd done the sort of, what do you call it? It's like the intro singing or whatever it is. You you go on before, <laughs> that shows how much I know about uh, everything. You go on before them, you're there something. You know what I mean. Um, and he said it was the worst experience he's ever had on tour just the worst because the guy and this is why I know he wasn't just in one of the camps you know when I talk about uh inclination towards younger people and also psychopathic he's in both those camps because he was just the worst person that my friends uh ever my friend ever came across um and and as as uh people in the chat are saying Miss Blue Ryan says Peaches Geldof another a, a daughter of a singer here I don't think she's with us at the moment, is she, anymore, um, unfortunately, Peaches. But she spoke up about, Peaches Geldof, that is, spoke up about Ian Watkins and outed him before the public found out. Yeah, she died not long after, very sad. Support act was the word I was looking for, or opening act. So, yeah, Ian Watkins, I knew before, a lot of us knew, he was outed as just the worst person like the worst but and that's before anyone knew what he had done hang on my camera's a bit is it which way does it need to go that way i think there we maybe go is that better i don't know i don't know look that's before we found out about what he'd been up to a lot of us you know had inklings and things um i better get into what he was well the reason i'm going into this today is because he's had his comeuppance in prison He's been in prison for a good 10 years now. Um, and I should explain what he did. Um, so Ian Watkins, former lead vocalist of the Welsh rock band Lost Prophets, was arrested in 2012 in a series of serious s actual offences. These charges include that stuff against young, you know, and also infants, as well as possessing, making and distributing images of that. So Watkins, Ian Watkins, this has pleaded guilty to 13 charges. I should say at the time there was a whole furore because there's a boy band called Steps. I don't know if you guys remember this. Again, this is going to be very British pop knowledge, I believe, um, or at least a little bit, well, bizarre for people outside of Britain to know. Maybe you guys do know some of this, but Steps also has a guy called Ian Watkins, who's this sort of blonde uh like a Ken doll in if we're thinking Barbie at the moment, just sort of sweet guy. Um, and newspapers, or at least one newspaper, put the wrong photo in uh, when they were discussing what this awful Ian Watkins had done. So my sympathy for Ian H. Watkins, I believe it was. They, they called him H, didn't they, really, his nickname, in Steps, who had nothing to do with this aside from having the same name. Anyway, among the charges uh, of the bad Ian Watkins were attempted R, uh, ape, <laughs> and assault of uh you know children under 13 um 
And then there was the big story, which were offences committed against certain children. These were children of two of the fans of his, two female fans whose identities have not been revealed, but who are also in prison because they were such big fans of his that they gave up their kids to him. That is screwed up. And that's why I thought this is really relevant to this channel because of the cult stuff. We're really talking about a very modern cult leader. This was only 10 years ago and it has echoes of Charles Manson. If you guys see the thumbnail to this, you can see pictures of, of him that I've sort of done up to have on the thumbnail. And you can see he's got that sort of mad Manson kind of eyes that stare. Uh, apparently he was just, when my friend uh, opened for him, he was just the rudest most obnoxious person um, who was just causing trouble for everyone. Uh, members of his own band had to get into punch-ups with him to just keep him, you know, uh, f coming to shows on time and things like that. Just, just the worst guy. Of course, none of that, all of that pales in comparison to what he was doing with children. Watkins was also charged with six counts of taking, making or possessing. Again, it's the images of these younger people. I hate having to speak around this on YouTube, but they will just kick the kick the channel off. They've done it before. Uh, and one count of possessing extreme images of an animal. Um, into, <laughs> this guy is an animal, to be fair. So any self-portrait would be that. Um, in December 2013, Watkins was sentenced to 29 years in prison with a further six on extended license, adding up to a total of 35 years. The judge presiding over his case described him as a committed and determined P word. It's worth noting that Watkins' crimes caused an international scandal at the time due to his status as a celebrity, causing a significant backlash and casting a dark shadow over Lost Prophet's previous achievements in music. Now, not that it was they'd done all that much, but obviously this was a big story just because of the egregiousness, just just how bad this was. There are bad people in our walks of life, all walks of life, and I think we talk about them all the time. But this was just so awful what he'd been doing. But also because he was a celebrity, a well-known figure in the music industry, his band was fairly popular globally. It had some global fans. You can look at his videos on YouTube now; they've got millions of views. Um, then there were the band reactions. The bandmates expressed their shock and horror when the allegations came out. They claimed they had no prior knowledge. He used to get his own uh, changing room away from the rest of them, where it is believed a lot of his crimes were committed. Uh, many fans, of course, felt deeply betrayed by Watkins, um, as his public persona had been one of a talented and respected musician. The legal proceedings, of course, attracted media attention due to their high-profile nature and severity of the charges. And Watkins' crimes affected his crimes effectively ended his music career, of course. The other members of Lost Prophets disbanded the group following his arrest and later formed a new band without him. There was also, I should say, a significant public criticism of authorities for their perceived failure to act sooner. As somebody in the chat was saying before, very, very helpfully, Peaches Geldof was among the people who spoke out before. There were reports of complaints before about Watkins's behaviour and people acted, authorities acted too slowly. And so he was able to commit more crimes. So... That is an ultimate example of something that we're hoping to shine a light on, that a lot of YouTubers are hoping to shine a light on, um, to, to expose, to stop this happening. Just people who are in elite positions, imbalances of power, think that they can do whatever they want. And just to repeat, before I get on to what's happened to him just, I think, this week, uh, the two women who were fans of Lost Profits and of Watkins, were also accused and convicted in the case. For legal reasons, their identities have been kept confidential in order to protect the identities of their children, who were the victims. That's really frustrating in a way, and I understand why they do it, but you also feel you want those women to be named and shamed, really. I suppose it doesn't... I suppose it's much more important that those children have their identities protected, isn't it? Uh, because the other side of it is just us wanting, you know, baying for blood when when really the important thing is the children right now. Both women were convicted of the charges. One woman referred to as woman A in court admitted to the attempted R word of a baby and was sentenced to 14 years in prison. The other woman, woman B, 
was sentenced to 17 years in prison after she pleaded guilty to charges of doing this to a child and abetting Watkins to do it to you know he was she was providing them for him the case shocked the public due to the involvement of the two mothers uh, and what they were doing to their own kids Watkins's manipulative influence over these women was a key point in the trial, revealing a grim and complex picture of power, celebrity and predation, and of course, cult dynamics. To what extent were these people, was it the banality of evil, these two women who just thought, oh, this guy is so brilliant and wonderful, uh, even the worst things imaginable, if he says they're okay, then they're okay. Can you imagine ever getting your head to that point? I don't, I just, I understand it almost on an intellectual level, right? Because you always read about uh, Arendt's, is it Hannah, Hannah Arendt? The banality of evil. And you, you think of all the horrible things that have happened, just the worst things that humans have done, particularly when authority has sort of said to them they should do it. But when you actually see it in practice, which is what's happened in this case, you just go, it, you just scratch your head. You just go, what? No, it doesn't make sense anymore. So again, it's it's a really weird one, and I don't know, I don't know how he was a, a, even able to find two women who would sink to such depravity. Just the worst thing, the worst thing ever. Um, the news coming out at the moment, ten years on, is that finally Watkins, who's forty six, he's been uh, ten years in prison. He was taken hostage by three other inmates at HMP Wakefield. That's the prison that he is in. The disgraced former Lost Profits frontman Ian Watkins is in critical condition in hospital after three heavy-duty prisoners took him hostage for a six for six hours. And they again it's a word I can't say on YouTube, but they, you know, did something to his neck with a weapon. Watkins, 46, was reportedly taken hostage by those inmates, roughed up, and sources claim Watkins has a target on his back in jail, and he was attacked on Saturday because the inmates were waiting for a day with less staff present. So that's what they were, or maybe waiting 10 years to get their chance. These kinds of people are not very popular, um, in prison. And I remember I spoke to, it was, a, it was an old episode, was it Atkins, his name? An old documentary maker who went into, he was in prison for a few years for tax fraud. And he said the same thing. As soon as those guys, it's like you've got this status game in prison where everybody's just, you know, they're already at the bottom of society. They've all done horrible things. They've had their freedom taken away from them. So when you're in prison, you are desperately looking anywhere you can find for somebody who is lower status than you so that you can be higher by comparison. And so when they bring in these guys, people like Ian Watkins, it's just an easy win. And those guys get torn apart. And, you know, it couldn't happen to nicer guys, you know. <laughs> Honestly, like someone like this guy deserves... And I, I'm not that guy. I'm not someone who... Th I don't... I'm not into, you know, uh, revenge. I don't get my kicks out of... Uh, pain even on awful people but when it's something like this I'd, I'd turn a blind eye because I think the guy's a psychopath and I, I you know and I just don't care what happens to him officers at the prison had to wait for an armed tornado team of specially trained riot officers to break up the hostage situation the officers hurled stun grenades into the cell in order to free Watkins imagine having to do that as your job because you'd want to sort of leave it you know, and there's been things like that, isn't there? There was an assassination of, who was it? Someone walking through an airport and it was like, oh, did the security guards sort of let, did they let let him do that? It was that, you know, I saw that the other day. I can't remember who that is. Um, but they, yeah, they had to go in and, and free Watkins. I bet they took a little longer than usual, the riot officers. I don't, or maybe they're very professional. I'd like to think if I were a riot officer or something like that, I would take my duty very seriously, just like a doctor. And you just, you no matter who it is, you do your job. So maybe that's what it was about. The ex-singer was obviously jailed for 35 years in 2013. He's hanging on at the moment. Um, and the latest news today um, is just that he's still in critical condition. And the ex-girlfriend of Ian Watkins has spoken out and said she's surprised it took so long for him to be attacked in prison as it was claimed he was targeted by inmates who had recently arrived in the prison. 
so so there you go i'm not you know i i think we're all surprised it's taken so long and you know what maybe he has been attacked before and we didn't even really know about it um but yeah we don't know what else has she said so that's she's sort of all over the news now the ex-girlfriend that's joanna difficult name to pronounce uh Mjadzelix. yeah she had reportedly warned police about the singer's vile urges only to be uh charged wait one second just checking these notes da, da, da. yeah she sort of got this is it she got charged of containing a, like possessing a lot of these images and stuff but it's because he was sending them to her and demanding her to keep it and stuff like that so she was later cleared of that um and she told um after telling jurors she had been trying to entrap her former lover and trick him into revealing his crimes god imagine being the girlfriend of a guy like that and being like god i've got to get him out i've got to get him outed sorry she said my only reaction is simply that i cannot believe it took them so long about the attack on on ian watkins in prison um and yeah it's absolutely it sounds absolutely right i mean and that's it it's just that's the news at the moment so he's holding on let me know if you guys got some questions and comments and things, and I'll sort of go. I'll go through a few of them. He's holding on at the moment. I'm talking. Anyone? Okay. So, so Rebecca Metzger saying, "Who are you talking about?" It's Ian Watkins of the Lost Prophets, who uh, I was explaining early on was jailed for thirty odd years for the worst crimes you can imagine, using even the his own fans to women to give up their children for those crimes having his own dressing room for rehearsals and uh tours and things like that so he could commit his crimes in those rooms absolutely abhorrent person thank you for the super chat sb burgeon who says met him when i was 13 he's an arrogant bully and definitely deserves it absolutely wow fascinating that you you knew that you you got the image of an arrogant bully even then as a 13 year old and might i say and i mean this without any facetiousness as far as we know, you're very fortunate you got away, um, you know, and didn't end up, as I, I hope, in his clutches like so many other did, so, so many others did. This guy is one of the worst people in history. Just, just awful, awful person. Uh, really, really bad. So um, I hope you did get away, and and that it was all right. So, so there you go. Um, let's see. I'm just I'm scrolling through, of course just to see if there's any uh, comments. Make sure, if you want me to put them up on screen, you've got to make sure you don't use any of those sort of words and things that gets YouTube very angry, which is, of course, completely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate to everyone, he has been attacked in prison. He was kept hostage for six hours. Quite extraordinary. Uh, people are just surprised it didn't happen sooner. Who knows what happens now? You can't go back to that or any prison. Uh, people are asking about Jared Leto in in the comments. This is completely unrelated to him. He looks quite similar, I suppose. I don't know of any stories around Leto, except that he is pretty much a cult leader. So there you go. James R. Crypto says, makes you wonder if someone is trying to scare a person in the media. And this was organised. What might that look like? So that would be because I guess someone in the media is trying, what is is doing something bad themselves. I, I don't know exactly how that might look. I think it's just people want status in prison. They've gone. I mean, they also wanted justice for what Watkins had done. That is right. Blue Swallow, Ian Watkins from Lost Prophets, the band did the worst things imaginable, not, and I mean this seriously, not Ian Watkins from Steps, who is often confused with him. Really, unfortunately, it's just the same name. And that's the worst thing. His face, this sweet guy, as far as I know, from Steps, his face was accidentally put into newspapers in headline, under headlines about the bad Ian, Ian Watkins. Stephen Sedal says, what happened to him? I'm in late. He got S to the T A in the net ridiculous i gotta talk like this on youtube and meanwhile there's like you know nutters on here who say whatever and they're fine but they come after me i don't know why that is maybe because it's a bigger channel now but i can't even say what happens to this awful person who if anyone deserved it 
Uh, it's this person, 100%, Ian Watkins. I, I still think about this. It's, you know, he pops into my head every now and then because I was saying at the beginning, just for anyone who's joined recently, um, people were saying allegations about Jared Leto. I don't I don't know them. and I can't put them up because it would be uh, defamatory, I suppose. But if stuff comes out about that, you can bet I will be on it. Uh, there's still the Dan Wooten stuff that I need to talk about and we need to do another video about, um, which is looking crazy at the moment. Um, let's see. I'm just scrolling down the the things. Total scumbag says Chris Caspian. Good point. Um, here's a story about him. Harry Potter's beard. A long time uh, viewer of this channel. My aunt's ex boyfriend's son. My aunt's ex boyfriend's son. Okay, wanted me to take him to see them play in my hometown. Guy gave me bad vibes, so I said no. I felt guilty at the time, but now <sighs> dodged a bullet there i think absolutely yeah people are referencing some of the awful photos of him online in and around uh areas with children um cult leader uh, cult leader anna Philaxis says what cult i haven't heard this so this is obviously i've done so many videos now about cults we've always we're always looking into what cults are cult dynamics and i really like the idea that and, and by the way there is no consensus on what the word cult means and where it comes from it comes a little bit from the word sect in french or cult uh it doesn't really make um there's no consensus as i say right no one knows exactly what constitutes a cult uh and what is a religion and what is this and what is that so some people would say that a cult could even be like your local soccer team or your book club or whatever, just anything where you, and that's, it's out of 10, it's on a spectrum. So that maybe your book club is a one out of 10 cult, whereas a Heaven's Gate is a 10 out of 10 or Scientology might be a 10 out of 10. So it's all on a bit of a spectrum. And I think as soon as you get a sort of group with a power dynamic and a hierarchy where uh, people who are lower in the rankings want to climb higher in the in the imagination of the person at the top, I don't think you need to have an official cult. I, I don't think you has to have a title. I don't think you have to register with like a cult's directory. I think it's more that um, you are someone like Ian Watkins and you get fans and they get higher in your esteem, uh, in your estimation, as they provide you with what you need, as they pay for more and more whatever inclusivity in the cult. And unfortunately, this was such a disgusting cult, just like the Manson one. I don't think the Manson, as far as I know, I don't think he ever sort of said, we are this cult. But people started following, women started following. And unbelievable, once you get into that cult dynamic, what people are willing to do for the leader. Thank you again for the super chat, SB Burgeon. Another one from you is very generous, helps to keep this channel running and and um, trying to expose awful people yes to update you nothing happened to me this was just in reference for you, those of you who just joined to sb burgeon um a viewer who went when he was 13 to meet uh ian watkins and even then knew he was arrogant but luckily nothing happened to him uh as as there were parents about who'd clout him because his band who are sound which means good were presenting rock school i took part in the summer holidays wow that's incredible. Yeah, I'm sure the other guys were fine. As I said about my friend who opened for him, he was just, it was just him that was the worst person ever, Ian Watkins, that the rest of the band. He didn't say anything about the rest of the band. So there you go. Um, Ariel K Music says, unrelated, have you heard the criticism about the sound of freedom? I really appreciate you and your channel and was surprised you didn't seem aware of that side of the story. Yeah, look, I get that there's a difficulty with this channel sometimes in being trying to be a centrist and these kinds of things and you end up caught up in tribal culture wars that you didn't even know existed particularly when they're on the american side of things i do feel a little more at home when i'm discussing dan wooden or um, ian watkins of the lost prophets or hugh edwards and philip schofield the people related to scandals in britain i'm sort of on home territory uh, when i'm dealing with american stuff which i do as much as i can i do find myself somehow in this in the middle of some i mean it's such a america is such a beautiful beautiful country and i love it whenever i'm there i have such a great time and the people are wonderful and beautiful as well but it's also just this huge sprawling um 
I don't know what you call sprawl of <laughs> of just disparate opinions and different kinds of people and tribes and things. And you end up just caught in the middle of some very, very passionate, passionate people. Uh, and, it, and it's very, very difficult. I, I, I understand that Sound of Freedom, which does relate to, of course, the Ian, Ian Watkins discussion. It's the movie about um, the transportation of, of these young people again to, you know, I'm, I'm speaking of in riddles here to, you know, but it, it is about those things. Um, and there are there are you know people on the on the on the left who say it's sort of right wing propaganda. There are people on the right who say, "Come on, that's irrelevant. This is this is about Victor." And then there are people on the left who say, "Yes, but it's not true." It's just it goes so deep, and it just leaves me in a mess. So it is very difficult. But you know what? I do these things called uh, Skeptical Sundays on the audio podcast, and I do them for Jordan Harbinger's podcast. And we might look into something like that soon. In which case, um, I will try and look at both sides very, very impartially as much as possible. But that would just be in an audio uh, podcast. James, our crypto, so we don't have to be physically captive for a cult. No, well, even Scientology is rarely physically restrains people. I mean, it does physically restrain them and they get beaten up and put in dungeons and things or whatever underground. But quite a lot of ex-Scientologists I've spoken to, and, and that is like the cult of cults, right? Uh, the difficult part was psychological. And the interesting thing here is that in recent years, um, British and Australian and I think American law have introduced uh, laws around psychological coercion. Uh, so there are laws now preventing people from sort of get it because we've started to realize how strong that is. And that's why I wonder about the two women involved with Ian Watkins and what they did by giving up their kids to him. That to me speaks of ultimate cult behavior and they won't have realized it at the time and that's how tribal we are we talk about the left and the right and sound of freedom and biden and trump and all these things right and i i don't you know whatever i'm in the middle of it and i understand all sides i try to and i get it um but how can any of us ever trust what we you know it's like that old thing i think about this sometimes like i know that I have opinions about everything, right? But I can't possibly be right about all of them because nobody is. I must be very wrong about some of my opinions, maybe even half of them, but they all seem really right to me. So which ones are the wrong ones? Which What's what's going on? You know, and, and the same goes for all of you. Every single one of you right now, a good portion of the things that you strongly believe are wrong. Because they must be, right? Otherwise, you'd be the only person in the world who's right about everything. Uh, and that's why it's so difficult. Like, how do you ever trust your mind? But what interests me is how your mind can go so far as to be end up being two mothers providing a conveyor belt of kids to a musician. Like, how far does your head go? And, and they would have thought, no, I'm doing whatever for the greater good or just like all the cult stuff. Just like the cult stuff. Muddy Witch says, why would I hit the like button before watching the video? Very good point. Very good point. I will tell my team not to put that thing saying hit the like button bef before you've even what I don't even know. Look, if you like it, hit the like. It helps the video to spread out and more people come across this channel. Um, do I want that? Do I want the channel to grow more than 213, 14,000? So what what will happen to my, you know, I think I do, I do. You want it to get as big as possible because then you can get the bigger guests on for the guests. And by the way, a lot of you guys do come to these live streams. And I don't know if you're aware that every Monday and Thursday I do um, pre-recorded episodes. And tomorrow one is coming out 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific um, with a woman who was taken in by police in Greater Manchester and was unconscious and the camera and stuff was all missing. It's like It's the maddest story ever of police brutality, like what they got up to, what they did to her. And that is a very sensitive topic and it is out tomorrow, 8pm UK time. So do go check those. They're just on my channel. You go to video. Those are the pre-recorded episodes, interviews with like cult survivors and survivors of scandals and all sorts of things. Chris says, is he going to die from it? We're talking about Ian Watkins, who was attacked in prison. No further information has really come out except that he is in a critical condition. It's been a couple of days almost or a day and a bit uh, and he's still about. So he'll quite possibly survive. Whether he'll still be the same 
Well, let's hope he's not, quite frankly. Bloody hell. Awful, awful, awful person. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, here's a point from Claire Wedgworth. Jeffrey Dahmer being killed so quickly meant that he didn't get to rot in jail. He got an easy way out. That's true. And that might be the case for uh, Ian Watkins from The Lost Prophets. Some people are saying who... And that's fair enough. It wasn't a very big band. This is a guy who is not so well known for his singing and is very well known for the horrible, horrible crimes he committed in mostly in Britain, I suppose. Uh, he is Welsh. He is from, uh, I think he's from Newport. Uh, but that is no reflection on the lovely people of Newport. There are, there, are, there are these people everywhere. So that's what it is, really. But yeah, horrible, horrible person. Uh, I am scrolling down just to see if there are any more points. By the way, I am going to do, I think Thursday, I've got another, in my recorded ones, I'm doing something on Manson, Charles Manson and Scientology with ex-Scientologist John Atak. So it's another reason to check out the channel uh, for the pre-recorded episodes that come out on Thursday. Um, let's have a look. I'm just going down. Uh, Courtney Walsh says, you're wrong about the Illuminati, Andrew. I didn't say anything about the Illuminati. I never mentioned them. Uh, <laughs> they do exist, she says. I, I, what do I? I didn't say they don't. I just don't have a clue. What the hell do I know? I wouldn't know. I'll tell you what. I've spoken to some very, very famous people. Some of the most famous people in the world, right? I've got to meet them because of my job, um, and I'm fortunate to have had that, you know. And sometimes they're quite conspiratorial, and these really famous people sometimes say. Oh, the Freemasons and the, all these people, all the elites and stuff. And I say, well, what about, hang on, have they contacted you? And they go, oh, no. And I go, well, if it's a whole secret group of whatever, why haven't they gotten you involved? And they go, oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. It's that thing, isn't it, where we, you know, we believe that everybody else is up to all the stuff, but then they don't, would never contact us. So has Andrew ever interviewed someone inside a prison? Judith Bogner says, yes, I have. I'm not sure it's on YouTube, though, but it might be on the audio version of the podcast on the edge with Andrew Gold on the edge with Andrew Gold on Spotify. And that was what's his name? Oh, bugger. I can't remember his name, but he oh, I can't even explain what he did. Bloody hell. He sort of fell as he tried to take his own, you know, and um, got his girlfriend. Um, that was the end of her, and he ended up in prison. Um, can't remember his name, but it's something like episode 40 or something. If you go to the audio podcast, or episode 30 or 25 or something like that, uh, and it was totally bonkers, that. so And we I had to call inside a prison, so that's why I think it's only on audio, because we didn't have the video, of course, and he had to, every 15 minutes, it, it ran out, and he had to queue up again, and we had to continue the conversation. Uh, so it was a whole it was a whole thing. Um, oh, again, SB Burgeon, you are you are funding this entire broadcast. Uh, he's and it's to say he's from Pontypridd, which is a da town down in the valleys. Well, thank you for explaining. Again, I would just say the the proud people of Pontypridd should should not uh, feel bad because there are bad people everywhere. Of course, um, let's just scroll down again. And there's more. Oh, James Clifford, Frederick Welch. Thank you for the thing, the super chat. And uh, James says, I went to his last show at the Roxy in LA with my ex. They did so well. My jaw dropped two months later when he was arrested. His arrest was made public. He's from Ponty Prid. Wow. They might have been a bit bigger than I realised at the time. I just wasn't that familiar with them. But I was definitely familiar with the story. Uh, and that is fascinating. My word. Um, let's see, let's see. Right, well, that's what I've got to say with that, and I think we'll keep up with that in the coming days. And there is more, apparently, to come out about Dan Wooten as well and the scandal happening in the UK with GB News and all that stuff that he's doing uh, and all that stuff. Oh, I've just got a little message here from, from Navi saying, have you heard about the Zayna Iman and Greater Manchester Police story? Out tomorrow... I've already interviewed her. It's a great episode at 8 p.m. UK time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. Keep watching this channel. There's going to be more updates to this story about Ian Watkins as he clings on to life, whether he deserves it or not. And there's going to be more about Dan Wooten. I'm trying to get an interview with the people breaking the story. 
um, about Dan Wooten. It's the Byline Times, and I've been messaging with them. They seem keen to come on, and then they don't, and then they do. So it's you know it's such a difficult one at the moment. We're trying to handle this at the moment. Last little question, HRH Gossip says, what do you think about John Travolta? He's a Scientologist, right? That's absolutely right. And apparently everybody says he's really nice, uh, whereas Tom Cruise is, is a bit psychopathic. That's what people say, all the ex-Scientologists seem to say it. And maybe maybe John Travolta is just, unfortunately, a bit um, doolally, you know? but a nice guy who knows who really knows except John Travolta himself but people who come into his circle say he's a very nice guy um hit that like button down below and comment and keep watching this channel uh, and as I say that big scandal is out tomorrow evening so make sure you're there for that